Praise the Lord. My message today is called Love Not the World or Perish. Today is the 24th of uh, September 2018. I'll start to read from uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world pass, is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. That was uh, also verse 17. Now from this scripture it is uh, pretty obvious that if we love the world, we do not have the love of the Father in us. Or we will not have eternal life, we will not abide forever. We will not be saved. There is no salvation if you love the world. And I'm going to show this. Because in Luke 14.33 Luke 14.33 There is written, So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not forsake all that he has, cannot be my disciple. As far as I understand, this is talking about our commitment to God. That our commitment need to be full and wholeheartedly 100% and that's a commitment to his word and to his spirit to Jesus he is the word of God he is the spirit of God <clears throat> it's a commitment to the truth praise God and uh, as it is written in Matthew 22 37 Matthew 22:37 <clears throat> Jesus said to him, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind." You see, we're called to love God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul, and all our strength. And that's a command. So, to love God is not uh, about a feeling, it is about commitment and faithfulness. And I will show that, continue to show that later in this message. So, if we're going to love God with all our heart, there's no room for the world. We cannot love the world. We cannot be committed to the world, we cannot be committed to, to riches, to money to materialism to family to friends you name it you see love is about commitment just like love in a marriage you see of course in a marriage you can have feelings you can feel you can be in love and you can feel a lot of love but the basic what the, what the love that to be in a marriage you're commanded to love and love is about commitment and faithfulness. Faithfulness. You see, when you marry, you need to say yes to the one you marry with a good heart. You see, you need to have given up all other commitments. You need to give up all other men and then be committed to your husband alone. That is what this means. Then you love him. You receive love for your husband. And then you remain faithful to him. You continue to love him. That is the kind of love you are commanded to do. And that is how it is with God also. A relationship with him is like a marriage. 
They are, he is our husband, and the church is his bride. And we are commanded to love him with all our heart. And that's about commitment. And when we love him with all our heart, Jesus said, he that loves me, he keeps my word. So to be committed to Jesus <clears throat> is to be committed to his word, to the truth, to his spirit, to walk in the spirit. That is to be committed to His Word. And it's very important to understand, you can't love Jesus if you, don't, if, you, if you don't follow Him, if you don't follow the Word of God, if you're not committing to keep the Word of God. It doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means that you are committed and you're faithful, and that is where you have all your commitment. Amen? But if we love the world, then Christ is of no avail to us. He is of no benefit. He can do nothing for us. Because our love is not complete with God. It's only when our love is complete with God, fully with God, that He will receive us and give us eternal life. You see, can't, you can't believe in... <clears throat> You can't believe in God unto salvation and not follow Him. And you can't follow Him 60% or 70%. You have to follow Him 100%, 100%. <clears 100%. And no one can say, I love God, I love Jesus, without following Him. Then you don't love Him unto salvation. You don't receive... You don't believe in Him unto salvation, and you don't receive Him. And you see, you come to stretch up your hand in a meeting and say, I receive Jesus. Because you believe in what He did, you believe what's written in the Bible, that He died on the cross and rose from the dead. And then you believe in that, and you think, you think, because you believe, you are saved. And then you, you may say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I will not follow Him. I will not be committed to His Word. I will not keep His Word. I will keep living the way I do. Or maybe I'll go to church once in a while, and then uh, the rest of my life I'll just seek after the things of the world. You see, <clears throat> you can't receive Jesus and not follow Him. And when you follow Him, <clears throat> you can't follow Him 30% or 50%. You need to do that 100%. If not, you have not received Jesus unto salvation. You see, when your heart is good, when the eyes, your eyes are good, or the eye of the heart is good, then your whole body will be full of light. Then you will receive His righteousness for free. You see, God is not asking you to be perfect or to be... He's not asking any work from you. That you, you, you stop doing this or you stop doing that or you, uh, to be saved. No. He's asking you to give Him your heart. <clears throat> and when you give Him your heart and He sees that you have, you're doing that uh, uh, with all your heart, then He will receive you and He will give you eternal life. He will give you life in your spirit. Your spirit will come alive. And God will live there. And then He, by His power, will work in you to quit with this or that according to His ways. You see, it's just like with circumcision. If you feel, we feel like we, we need to be circumcised by works, like it's written in Galatians 5, 20, Galatians 5, 2 to 6. Galatians 5. There we go. Five, two, two, six. <clears throat> and this is about circumcision. There were some people saying that you have to be circumcised uh, in, in Israel and in the, in the Jews. They, they said you have to be circumcised to be saved. Uh, you have, uh, saying you have to, you can't, uh, you're saved by works. You have to quit doing something or, or you have to do something to be saved. 
But uh, here it's written, Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again, again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither is circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. So you see, you can't be saved by works. You can't be righteous by quitting this or quitting that. If I, uh, before I can be saved, uh, I need to quit smoking, I need to quit this, I need to quit that. No! You just turn, you just give <clears throat> Jesus your heart. You give God your heart. You, you repent from following or from seeking after the world first to seek God first and his will and to be committed to his word to read the word of God to seek his word to try to understand the word so you can keep it so you can walk in it so so <clears throat> you're setting your mind in a different direction 100% Then, uh, when God sees your heart is really have done has have done that, has done that, then um, He will receive you. He will give you peace. He will give you eternal life. Amen. So love is not a feeling. It is a commitment. The love, you see, the different kind of love the Bible is talking about, but this kind of love to be saved. To love God with all your heart, it's a command, it's a decision you make, it's not a feeling. There can be a feeling before you make the decision, or this feeling can come later. But to be saved is, is about uh, making a decision to follow Jesus after you have received faith in Him. That is the meaning of believing. It is to make a decision after you have received faith in Jesus, you make a decision to believe in Him or to follow Him. I'm going to show you that later in another scripture. But <clears throat> to follow Jesus or to love Jesus is about a commitment to His Word. And we can read from John 14, 21. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So he who has the commandments of God, he who has faith, he has received understanding. And then he keeps the word. Because he has already repented, to follow Jesus, to be committed to his word. So when he gets faith and understanding of uh, something is uh, the word of God or the will of God, he will follow that in the power that God supplies. He will keep his word. He will, he will hold on. He will hold fast to the word. He will be committed to the word. To, be, to, to, to try to adapt to the word. To be able to keep it. Amen? And that is the meaning of the word. To be committed to Jesus. To his word. That is the, what it means to believe in him. You see, you believe in Jesus after you receive faith. And now I'm going to show you that scripture. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Verse 26 to 20. Verse 26 to 28. <clears throat> and he's talking to some, uh, some Jews here. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long, verse 24, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25, Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they here bear witness of me. 
But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That is the idea of belief. That is how, what it means to believe. It's to hear his voice, and then to repent, to follow him. And when we repent and we see, say yes, then Jesus knows us. He, he, he becomes into, he comes into, a, we make a repentance to follow him, and we do it with a, a hundred percent of our heart. We do it fully. We, we give up all that we have, all other commitment. It doesn't mean that you need to sell everything you own, but you give up all other, you give up your commitment to everything, to riches, to everything, to follow Jesus when He leads you and directs you. And of course, when He leads you and directs you, you will have full assurance. He will not press you, He will not, you will, he will not you know, lead you with fear, He will leave you with faith. He will lead you with faith and full assurance. Uh, and he's a gentleman, he, he, he wants you to know and understand what you're doing. And he, he leads you with joy and peace. That's how God will lead you. He will not press you to do anything, to give. He will not press you to give. He will lead you with faith, full assurance and peace and love and joy. That is the fruit. That, that, those are, are the fruit. Those character, characteristics are the fruit of the Spirit. So, those who believe, they hear His voice, they have faith, and I know them, and they follow me. And again, how much do they follow Him? 100%. They've given up all that I have to follow Jesus. And then He's saying in verse 28, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You see, when you turn to Jesus, you hear His voice, <clears throat> you make a decision, you repent, and you follow Him with all your heart, then He will give you eternal life. He will, your spirit will come alive. The Spirit of God will come within you. God will live within you. Jesus will live within you. You become born of God. So your spirit will change. Maybe you don't feel anything in the beginning, but as time goes, you will feel something. You will know that Christ is in you. If not, if, don't, if you don't know Christ is in you, you need to check yourself because it may be that you're not passing the test. You have not given everything. You are not committed to everything. You have not turned to Him with everything. So then you need to check your heart and make sure you follow Jesus. So that is how it's to believe. You see, faith only cannot save you. James 2, 14-17 James two fourteen to seventeen. <clears throat> what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? Can faith save him? I can read a little more to seventeen. If a brother or sister is naked and is destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart depart in peace, be warned and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. You see, this is the work of faith, it's not a work of of the law. It's not works. You work uh, in the flesh. You, you do work to be saved. No, it, this is the work of faith. And the work of faith unto salvation is that we we have faith, but faith alone is dead if you don't act upon your faith. So how we act upon our faith unto salvation is to repent and follow Jesus. That is uh, 
that was, that is the act of faith. That's how we act on so uh, on faith unto salvation. And later also, that is also how we do when when God leads us, He will give us faith, and we respond. You see, faith alone will not give us life, but when we respond to faith or to the spirit of life within our body that's knowing operate, operating within us, then life is produced. You see, when we respond to the Spirit of God, it will produce life in our body and in our circumstances. When we respond to faith, that gives life. But when we respond to the flesh, it will produce death and sickness and difficulties. But when we respond to the Spirit, and that is what God wants us now, He wants us to respond to the Spirit. He says, God is spirit. And he that worships him must worship in spirit and in truth. And to worship God is to serve him. We serve him. We serve him in spirit and truth. We are called to walk in the spirit, to walk after the spirit, to respond to the spirit. That's what God wants. And, and, and when we do that, it will release faith. It will bring faith to come alive. And it will not only come alive, but it will produce eternal life. It will produce the things of God in our life. The character of God or the blessing of God. It will produce. And to respond to faith after we have become saved... It could only be like to give Him thanks and praise Him, open our mouth and praise Him and thanks Him and, and, and thank Him. And, and of course it could be that He gives you faith and He gives you compassion to do something for somebody else. And when you do it, when you give or when you help somebody, it releases life into that situation or to, into your life. You'll, you'll be rewarded. You shall, you shall, um, you shall um, reap. When you sow in the Spirit, you shall reap eternal life by the Spirit. But if, re if you sow in the flesh, you shall re reap corruption by the flesh. So, so this is, these are principles of, of the Gospel. So, you see, faith or righteousness is granted... Now we're back onto the saving faith. Righteousness is granted to him who believes. We, I'm going to read Roman 4 5. Roman 4 5. Here's written But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. You see, this is not about doing a lot of good deeds in the flesh. No, it's about believing, responding to the Spirit, responding to faith. And when we respond to faith, then you believe on Him who justifies the ungodly. You see, when but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. You see, then we receive righteousness when we believe. Then faith is coming alive to give us righteousness. It's cleansing the blood of Jesus to cleanse away all sin. And we receive the righteousness of God for free. Hallelujah. But now, what if our heart is committed and our commitment is with the world? Well, then there is no power to salvation. There is no power to become a child of God. No power. And uh, we can uh, read that from uh, John chapter 1. John 1.12 There's written, 
With as many as received him, to them he gave the right or the power to become children of God to those who believe in his name. You see, when you believe in his name, when you respond to faith, then you receive power to become a child of God. But if you love the world, if you love the world, we ha don't have that power. It's just like, like a woman, uh, like the man that uh, loves a woman and he wants her to become his wife. And she gives him, uh, she says yes, she would love to be his wife. And she loves him very much. But she also loves another man. And then she may say to, to this, this man, this, um, we can call him the king. And she says to the king, I promise you I will be faithful to you and committed to you. Uh, every day, except for one day every year or one day every month, then I will be with another man. You see, because she doesn't give all her heart, she will be rejected. Because she doesn't give all her heart, she will not have the power to enter into marriage. To enter into the kingdom of this king. She, will, she may desire the kingdom. She may look at the kingdom and see the wonderful things. And, but she will not have the power to enter in. And this is the way with us. When we receive Jesus unto salvation, when we receive love for Jesus, when we receive Him and we do it in the right way, then we receive power to become children of God. Hallelujah. You see, if we seek the world first, we don't have power to enter grace. Grace will be of no benefit to us. What Jesus did for us on the cross will be of no benefit to us. And we can read from Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6. I think that's what we read earlier. No. There's written, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. You see, when we seek the kingdom of God first, that is where we have our commitment. That is what we are committed to. That is what we are seeking first. That is the focus of our life. All the focus of our life is it's to is to seek His kingdom, and this kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all things shall be added to us. But if our heart is not there, and we seek the world, we seek uh, uh, friends, we seek to sit on the internet, or, uh, uh, and we spend all our time there, and we have no time to read the Word, or, or, or to be praying, or it's all about internet and looking at videos on the internet or sitting on Facebook and chatting on Instagram or uh, if that's what we seek first then well sorry you will not have the power to enter into the kingdom of God you will not grace will be no of no benefit to you because you don't have what it takes you see, it's really easy. You see, for a, when a man meets a woman uh, and she, he loves her, and it's, uh, it's it's really easy for her to really make a decision to say yes. She understands that most of the time that she needs to say yes to the one who loves her so much. You need to choose. You can have many. Before you're married, you may, you may be dating different men and you may have be interested in this one or that one. But at one point you need to make a choice to be faithful. And then all things will be added to you. Then He will receive you and He will give you everything. That's how it is with God. We need to make a choice. You have, 
Today we have uh, people working in parades for homosexuals, pride movement, you have uh, you have uh, you have Islam, you have uh, Hinduism, you have Buddhism, you have uh, Satanism, you have many different spiritual directions. And then you have the world, the riches of the world, and become rich and more rich and more rich. That's the focus of your life. You see the, the many directions you can take in your life. But at one point, many things attracting your attention and want your commitment. But at one point we need to make a decision. You need, we need to make a decision if we want to be committed to God and to be, to be committed to Him, to say yes to Him. We need to do it with all our heart. We need to make a decision. To be committed to God and to be committed to Him is to be committed to Jesus. Because Jesus, God, the Bible says that all judgment is given unto the Son, so that everyone should honor the Son as they honor the Father. If somebody, someone does not honor the Son, he will, he's not honoring the Father either. There's only one way to heaven uh, or to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. And, and what does that mean? That's true being committed to Jesus, to follow Him with all your heart. And to follow Jesus, be committed to His Word. Because Jesus is the Word of God. You can't say, I love Jesus, but I don't love His Word. I, well, I pick and choose. I like some of the Word, but I don't like everything. You need to figure out what is the Word of God. And then we need to be committed to it. And we need to be committed to the truth. You see, the truth is different today than it was in the Old Testament. We need to understand what is the law of God today and how is it different from the law of Moses in the Old Testament. We need to be committed to the truth of the Word of God. That is to make a decision. We need to make a decision. If you want to enter the kingdom of God, of God you need to make a decision. You need to choose who do you want to be married to. You want to be married to Satan? You want to be married to the world? Well, then you're married to the devil, really, because he is the king of the world. The devil is the king of the world. But Jesus has overcome the world. Hallelujah. We're saved only if you receive Jesus. John 1.12 again. John 1.12. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So you see, to receive Jesus is the same as to believe in his name. You receive love for Jesus. You make a decision to love Jesus, to be committed and faithful to him. Then you receive him. And we're going to show you that to receive Jesus is to receive love for Him. That is what it means. You can't stretch up your hand in the meaning and say, I receive Jesus. But then you don't choose to love Him. You don't choose to follow Him. You've not made your decision yet. You're still walking here, walking there. Your mind is divided. You, 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 you're drawn in many directions. Well, you need to make a decision. Or you're not going to make it. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. It means that you have made a decision. And then God is on your side to help you. To put off the old man and to put on the new. And then we need to figure out how we do that. Hallelujah. But if we don't make a decision... If we love the world, if we don't receive love for Jesus, well then we will perish. 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10-12. Uh, I can start a little earlier. It's, a, it's a, about the coming of Antichrist or something like that. But from verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. 
because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see here? If ye do not receive love for the truth, for the truth of the Word of God, then we shall perish. So that is the meaning of receiving Jesus. Because when you receive Jesus, you get power to become a son of God, or the child of God, we receive power, we receive power to become children of God. And here it's written, if you do not receive love for the truth, then you shall perish. So to receive Jesus must be to receive love for Him. To make a decision, to be committed to His Word, to the truth of the Word. To seek the truth and to follow it and respond to it and walk in it and be committed to it. Then He shall give, you, give us eternal life. You see, Matthew 6.24, Matthew 6.24. There's a, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon here might mean materialism and riches and so on. And right before that, it's written about the lamp of the body, is the eye. When your eye is good, then your whole body becomes full of light. It's talking about the same thing. And then he's saying here, uh, you cannot serve both God and mammon. You, you will hate the one and despise the other. You will love the one and despise the other. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. And here it's just taking an example of what you cannot serve. You cannot serve God and Mammon. But you cannot serve the world and God at the same time. Because he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. To serve here is the same as the love. Just to be committed and faithful. It's to serve. It doesn't mean that you're perfect. It just means that you are committed and faithful. Hallelujah. That is the direction of your life. To serve God with all your heart and to give up all things that have captured your heart before. And then he says, do not worry about this and that, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. When your heart is right, all these things shall be added to you. But if you seek those things first, like what shall I eat, what shall I drink, what, that's the focus, you're seeking those things, that you're occupied with that, you have no time for prayer, you have little time for the Word of God, you have little time to listen to God and to find out His will. Because you're so occupied with seeking the world. You, you, your job is taking all your time. All your time when, when you come home. You're so tired. You have no time. You just want to sleep. And then you sit in front of the TV for a couple of hours. And, 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 and then you go to bed. And then next day. And then, then you go to church on Sunday, of course. Or maybe. Well, I don't know. But if we seek the world first, the things of the world first, we are not going to make it. We may have time to sit two hours in front of TV, but no time to read the Bible, no time to pray. You're not able to pray for one hour, but you can sit in front of the TV for one hour, or two hours, or three hours. 
And then after that, you're on the internet, you're on Facebook, you're checking your uh, mail. No one can serve two masters. You cannot, in another translation it's written, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and riches. We all want to be rich. We want to be rich. We want to be rich. So we're using all our time to be become rich. Not to seek the kingdom of God. The fellowship of the brothers. That is the will of God. To fellowship with the brothers. To pray. To study the word of God. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 5.15, 2 Corinthians, five fifteen. There's written about Jesus, and he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again. You see, we better start living for him now because that is what it's going to be, what everything is going to be about for all eternity. It's to live for God. It's to work with him. It's to cooperate with him and obey him and A life of joy and peace and, and a wonderful greatness. But if we don't live for Him now, we'll perish. We'll end up in darkness. There is sorrow, sorrow and pain and fire and darkness. It's not going to be fun at all. <clears throat> so what is the world that we need to... What is the world? What is that we need to give up? It's to be, we need to give up being committed to, to the sin nature, the passions of the flesh. Lies, false teachings, false, falseness, we need to give it up. The philosophies of the world, worldly institutions, worldly organizations, worldly min ministries, even if they're called churches, even if they're the Christian ministry, we cannot love them. We cannot be committed to them. We cannot be faithful to them. We need to be faithful to the Word of God, not to organizations and denominations, even if they're called churches. We cannot. There are worldly organizations that mistakenly are called churches. We cannot be committed to them. We cannot love them. I can have a ministry, but I can't love it. I can't be committed to it. It's only everything is about my ministry. No, I need to be committed to the brothers in the church, to the body of Christ. To the will of God, to the word of God, to the truth, to the spirit of God, to, to the, the will of God, to the kingdom of God, to what God's plan is for the church, for his body. Not just about me and me and me and how can I get more money, mostly, most money from my ministry and everything is about my ministry. And then I want people to become members of my ministry where I am their boss. And to build bigger and bigger and bigger ministry. Wow. I need to be committed to God. To His will. And to the brothers. I need to love the brothers. He that loves God also will also love the brothers. The other people who are committed to Jesus, to, that love Him with all their heart. And we'll be committed to fellowship with them. Not only, we are not only committed to those who belong to the same worldly organization that I belong to. We have a special uh, uh, fellowship because we belong, belong to, the, to the world. All of us belong to the world. We love the world. We serve this organization or this ministry. 
and, and we have a special brotherhood. Oh my God. We need to repent from that. We need to repent from them. Come away from everything, every kind of organization or ministry that's trying to make you become a member or to be committed to the ministry. You need to come away from that. You need to run away from that with your life. Because if we love the world, we will perish. If I'm committed to the world, I will perish. You see, many people can be within different kind of organizations, different places, but they have not, they don't love it. They're not committed to it. They're not faithful. They are faithful only to God, Jesus, and they have no problem to fellowship with everybody. They're not limited to their organization. But if you love it, if you love the world, that is the world. Denominations. They're, we're easily being deceived because they have Christian names. They're called churches. So it's almost like a, a wolf in a sheepskin. That will, that will try to make you love, be committed to the world. It's almost all over Christianity today. Christianity today is, is full of organizations and institutions and, and corporations, denominations, associations that are called ministries, that are called churches. And then they are saying that you need to become a member of that organization and uh, you need to be committed. And then when you meet some people on the street and you see what church do you go to, what church do you belong to, we come up with all kinds of names different from Jesus Christ and His body. This is serious because this is the world dressed as the church. But it's a lie trying to deceive us into loving the world. And when we love the world, the devil got us where he wants us. When we love the world, the devil got us where he wants us. And we will perish. I guarantee you, if we love the world, if you're committed to the world, to worldly organization, ministries, whatever, we will perish. That is the word of God. We need to repent from that. We need to come back and be committed to Jesus, to God, to the kingdom and His will and the will of His kingdom, to His body, to the brothers, to the fellowship of the brothers, not limited to certain those under certain that are within certain organizations and ministries. No, no, no. We need to be seeking fellowship with those we know are committed to Jesus alone, to His body, to the fellowship of the brothers. They don't have ministries and, and, and those kind of limitations in their mind at all. And we can be committed to friends, family, job, riches, materialism, money. You see, for some people, friends are coming before everything. Friends and family. If there's something going on in the family, it's more important to be, be, be so occupied with family and, and family, family, and all kinds of things going on there, and friends, that you have no time for fellowship. We are not committed to fellowshipping according to the will of God. We don't have time for, for prayer. We don't have time for the Word of God. Because fellowship, we're seeking friends and family before everything. And Facebook, Instagram, I don't know what other uh, tech companies uh, you can be connected to, but many others. And we are so occupied with that. Wow, we need to repent. We need to repent or we are not going to make it. If we love the world, we will have another spirit. 
We may have been saved and, and received Jesus and started to follow him at one time, but then we have been deceived or we have been pulled into committing ourselves to the world. And the day we commit ourselves to the world, our spirit will change. We will no longer have the love of the Father in our heart. But instead, we, will, we may receive a religious spirit, a spirit of hate. We may hate the truth suddenly. We love the teaching of my church and the teaching of denominationalism and sectorism uh, and uh, I belong to this, uh, this church and, and if somebody comes and says, well, I belong to Jesus alone, you despise him, you, you, you hate him, you hate the word, you don't want to listen to him, at least he will not be able to preach in your church because he may be, he may be speaking the truth and you don't like the truth, you only like what is approved by your organization. So the brothers, the true apostles and prophets and teachers and, 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 and evangelists, they will not be allowed to preach in your church because they, will, they may speak the truth. And there may be a threat to your organization and, and that the members will leave your organization. Wow, my God, what is going on? And you may have a, a heart that's indifferent to it. You may just be be plain worldly, uh, and you just are indifferent to it, Christians, or, or or you may hate them. You may hate those that are um, against abortion and and uh, against homosexuals and uh, uh, and that try to be committed to the word of God and to speak the truth. You will hate those people. You will try to silence them. And you see. When you, don't, when you love the world, you will get another spirit. You will have another spirit. Matthew 6.24, we can read that. Matthew 6.24. Matthew 6.24. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise Vice the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that we will understand the Word of God, understand the way unto salvation, understand that we where we need to repent. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, it's written in, uh, in Revelations, uh, in the beginning of Revelations, that come back to your first love. Repent and come back to your first love. If not, He's going to come and, well, if not, you're going to perish. Come back to your first love. That's where we need to come back. We need to come back and be again committed. To Jesus Christ with all our heart. We need to repent and come away from being committed to the world. In Jesus mighty name may God bless you and may God help us all to follow Jesus. And it's not difficult. Jesus said my yoke is easy. It's easy. You see it's not so hard to be married. Many people are married. It's not so difficult to be faithful. It is not. Most everybody are, fa everybody are faithful. And then there are some that are unfaithful. But most people are faithful. And it's not very hard. And it's not very hard to make a decision to be faithful to God and to follow Him. He will help us and He will give us the strength and ability. He's not asking for us to be perfect. He's asking for our commitment, for our heart to say yes to Him with understanding and with a decision being made in Jesus' name. God bless you all. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> and if you want to hear and see more uh, teachings and preachings, you can visit uh, www.lovejesus.today or you can visit www.lovejesus.rocks or www.trustchrist.faith or you can visit YouTube and then please don't forget to support this ministry please don't forget to support this ministry so that the word can go out that we can work hard for the gospel of Christ in Jesus mighty name Amen.